Ben, it's a pleasure to meet you, and thanks for doing the first ever Sexist Eden fantasy video interview. Well, well thank you. I, I like being the first. So <laughs> you guys are virgins. <laughs> More or less. You've built a reputation as being among the least stereotypical of adult film stars, and you've certainly established yourself well beyond that niche in the entertainment industry. Is porn star really still your professional identity, given everything else you've done? Well, I like to say I wear many shoes, if you if you will. Um, I mean, once porn star, always porn star, because it's out there for life. But I really have tried to find a way to leverage my name and like carry on a legacy as Savannah Sampson and so many other things, like my wine company. And I'm hoping that really with the wine, that that's something that my family, you know, my son can bank on in the future. So, and I'm starting PornStarPoker.net, which is still, again, porn star, but it'd be you know, not having sex in front of the camera, but it'll still be, you know, you utilizing the name and having fun with it. I'll be playing online poker, like with real money, and people will be able to see me and play with me at the same time. So there's a lot of fun things going on. And again, I can never regret anything I've done and just, you know, use the porn star thing and make it work for me. Well, one, thing I know, one thing I know you've been involved with for a while uh, is, is the AIDS Service Center in New York. Could you tell us how you came to be involved with that and the whole safer sex in the city uh, but, you know, yeah. fundraising thing? I know you've been a prominent supporter for a couple of years. Well, being the East Coast girl, Vivid girl, um, and living in Manhattan, uh, they approached me a few years ago, you know, knew that I had my wine and was wondering if I'd like to maybe donate some wine for the cause and, you know, host the show or host the event. And I, I loved the idea. I, I didn't even realize how great the organization is at the time, but I, you know, I still like the idea of safer sex in the city. I mean, to promote that and, you know, because people forget they have to take care of themselves and, and then once I got involved and I realized just how great, what really great things they do uh, for people out there, you know, living with HIV and AIDS and and maybe, you know, not being able to afford to you know, get the help that they need. And this organization is just fantastic. So I'm really proud to be part of it. And this year is going to be a lot of fun at um, the party event. And it's, what, on the 24th. And I'll give you those details later. But um, I look forward to the event each year. And I'll be giving away some... DVDs and um, just mingling with just a group of really, really great people doing wonderful things for society. So I'm really your personal life. Does your professional life complicate your life as a mom? And what do you tell your son and at what age? Oh, gosh, you know, that's a good question. I'll cross that road when it happens. In fact, it's starting to happen. My, my son is nine. He knows the Savannah Sampson name. And, of course, he doesn't understand the whole birds and the bees things, but um, he knows that I'm not like other mothers, you know, I'll all of a sudden come out of the, with this like frilly costume on and I just say, you know, you know, because I get, get it for feature dancing, you know, and uh, he'll be like, mom, what are you doing? And I have to warn him I'm not like other mothers. But also to teach him that, I mean, kids can be cruel and kids can, you know, make, you know, never to make fun of anybody about because of what their parents do for a living. And, you know, he'll just, I just have to make him understand that I'm not ashamed of what I do. And, you know, if he, if he does happen to see, you know, porn or anything like that, it's not a way to behave. And that he's got his whole life ahead of him to learn, you know, to, to discover all the wonders there are about sex and, and not to jump into anything before he's ready. So um, it's going to be delicate, a uh, delicate situation. But um, if I have a baseball bat, wooden baseball bat that says, you know, Vivid Girl, Porn Star, Savannah Sam's on it. He's like, why does that say porn on it? And I said, well, because that's what your mother does for living porn. And he's like, oh, okay. And now that he understands what porn is, but uh, and then he'll like, say, mom, why do you have gentleman club on your shirt? And I said, well, because that's where I work sometimes. You know, I go there, you know, and I, I dance and I make the money on stage. And he's like, oh, brother, that's my mom. You know, so I don't really know what it's going to be like for him exactly, except that his father and. His father's from Venezuela, and, and he, you know his side of the family is they're 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 scholars and teachers and doctors, and they walk around with my Savannah T-shirt, and they're all proud of me. And it's his sister. I, I have a stepdaughter, and she's like the coolest thing in school about it. So I just if you remember, he's in Manhattan, and so it's not going to be quite the same as if maybe other parts of the world. But um, I guess the best is just to let him know I'm not ashamed of what I do, and it's. 
I'm not going to be in front of the camera forever, and I just, you know, have to make sure I'm there for him so that he'll be able to deal. The kids are like, oh, I saw your mom last night, you know. I'm trying to teach him little sound bites, you know, so he'll have something to come back with, like, oh, you wish your mom was as hot as me. It's some things that he'll be prepared for little things in case that happens. The, uh, the, the whole trajectory of your career is pretty well known to your fans, I know, but maybe not as well known to our audience at Sexes. Could we hit a couple of the uh, seminal moments over the years? You were a small-town girl from upstate New York, I've read that, who wanted mm -hmm. to become a ballerina, and you did. Yeah. Is that right? Well, I, I studied Giacchetti Method of Classical Ballet in a good school I started when I was 13, and I just love ballet was my whole life. I, I have my advance, you know, I passed my advance exam as a dancer of the, with the Imperial Society of London, England, and, um, but I really didn't have great feet or not natural turnout. I was a good performer. And yes, I had the dreams of being a ballerina, but really I don't have the physical attributes, you know, that you would need. And I also, I moved to Manhattan for ballet, but I got kind of, I mean, I came from a small town and I got caught up in all the craziness that New York has to offer, and I did everything but ballet. And uh, it wasn't healthy for a while, and then, you know, I discovered um, dancing. I danced at uh, scores, well, stripped. I don't even like to call it dancing, you know. Um, and that's where the Samantha Samson name, you know, became. I started doing Howard Stern show, and I don't know, it just kind of like fell into place, um, the whole adult thing. I had a... Um, a fantasy of making a movie and I ended up writing a letter to Rocco Sofredi in Europe thinking I could like go to Europe I could make this movie no one out no one would ever hear about it but um, then I you know I got porn fever it was um, I ended up telling on Howard Stern and then it got nominated for best foreign film so I went to the Avian Awards and I saw the vivid booth and I thought you know how beautiful the girls were and I really wasn't serious, but I went up to someone and said, so how do I become a Viva girl? And they were like, well, I don't know if we're looking for a contract girl. Well, wait a second. And then the next thing you know, I was meeting with Stephen Hirsch, and they offered me a contract. They loved the idea of having an East Coast girl. I thought I would have to move to L.A., but instead they, they liked the fact that there would be someone in New York. So that's just how it all happened. The, uh, how, how important was your friendship with Howard Stern to your career? I, I mean, I've read that, I've actually read, and you know, there are all kinds of things online, you can't believe everything you read, that he introduced you to visit. visit. Well, I mean, every, anyone who really knows me to this day is because of Howard Stern. I just won the Skin Achievement Award that they gave, they gave the... Is I've, that a certificate or, you know? No, the trophy with like a, myself on a big thing, you know, and it cool. says... The, the girl who provided the most eye candy over the years. <laughs> uh, I, I have to, it's at the, um, it's at Howard Stern now. I have to go pick it up, my trophy. Otherwise, I could show it to you. But, um, I mean, he's been really wonderful to me. I, I've known him, you know, for years now since, you know, I, I would, they would have their parties at scores and, and, um, they've always found a way to put me in the game on the show. And I guess the first time I was on the show, I, I showed up in a fur coat and like just black lingerie underneath and he just thought that was great. Ever since then, you know, they always put me on the show. Oh, where'd you go? I disappeared. And um, so yeah, but to this day, I think most most people know and he still, you know, talks about me every now and then on the radio or on the serious, I whatever guess. It, whatever it is he's on at this point. King exactly. of media. Yeah, I just saw him at the, I went to the Sex in the City premiere, Sex in the City 2 premiere and I saw him there and he was like, oh, Savannah, it's always fun to see him. Did you, that. did you like the movie? You know, it's easy, so easy to get caught up in when you're at the premiere and everyone's hooting and hollering and, you know, Chris not like Mr. Big sitting right in front of me and, and uh, you know, what's not to love? You know, sitting with Mario Cantone and it was just such fun. I think they overdid it a little bit with the wardrobe situation. Yeah. You know, like, you know, you know the whole couture and changing every few minutes in the desert. It was a little overkill with that, but of course I had so much fun in the movie, and I can't wait to see it again. Yeah. Um, you